ET Now Startup Central, India's first and only daily show focused on startups and entrepreneurship. I'm Chandra Shrikan, joining you from the Search Technology Conference in Bangalore. And I'm Krishna Kumar, coming to you live from ET Now's Mumbai studios. First up, I check on all the headlines here at ET Now Startup Central. Flipkart's Sachin Bansal says the right people, the right investors, and staying grounded are the three things that work for India's biggest e commerce company. Also admits that it does get lonely at the top. Where there are cash inflows, outflows are bound to happen. That's the word coming in from ACE investor Shubhrata Mitra of Axel Partners. Also says that entrepreneurs need to see out the downtrend in the market as it is completely normal. Oyo Rooms founder Ritesh Agarwal opens up about the acquisition of Zo Rooms, outlines the targets for the next 12 months and talks about plans of an overseas foray as well. Can mobile wallets go mainstream? That's the question Chandra put to an expert panel on the payment space at the search conference in Bengaluru. We'll get you a slice of that discussion. Straight up, let's head across to Chandra in Bengaluru, who is uh, keeping all eyes on the Surge Conference, day two of Surge Conference in Bengaluru. Chandra. That's right, uh, Krishna. The turnout on the second and final day of Surge Conference was pretty encouraging as well. A lot of energy under the roof, uh, you know, because there were hundreds of startups uh, that had uh, set up booths and really eager to showcase what they were trying to build. But I uh, think clearly all the attention was taken away by some of the biggest names in uh, 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 internet, in the world of uh, consumer internet. And we're really going to kick it off with who else but uh, India's uh, largest e-commerce company, Flipkart. Its uh, founder Sachin Bansal shared some interesting lessons uh, from his own journey as an entrepreneur. Uh, certainly uh, some very interesting insights that, that a lot of startups and entrepreneurs can relate to. I think one thing that definitely worked well for us is that uh, that we we worked, uh, we were very clear with the people that we want to work with. And uh, there were clear uh, boundaries or constraints that we put on ourselves that uh, I, that, that this is the kind of people that we want to work with. And, and as a startup, it's very hard to take that call. Yeah. And if I look back, uh, uh, we were, when we were a small company, and uh, uh, of course, I mean, when you're a small company, especially in 2007 or 2008 time period, I mean, that time, uh, startups weren't that cool at yes. that time. Right? So, and then what we, what we found is that uh, uh, we, we, could have, we could have lowered a bar of talent or we could have easily uh, said yes to a lot more people who were coming to us because of various reasons, uh, not necessarily the right ones a yeah. lot of times. And uh, we, but, we, but we kept our uh, resolve during that period and that really paid off. Keeping your ears and eyes to the ground yes. and understanding what is really going on from on all the time is something that has really worked uh, well for us and making sure that we are always grounded, we don't become arrogant and, and don't starting think, start thinking that we can, we can move a lot of things just because we are great and just because a lot of people say that we are great. Uh, making sure that that doesn't go to our head uh, is something that we have done. I never read positive PR about us, ever. Um, and, um, and I always read criticism. I've always um, stayed open to change and to learn and to keep that attitude alive. And yeah. that's very important and it's very easy to lose that. Uh, it's very easy to think that you know enough or you know better than other people uh, and, and to, to start believing in the, your own PR. When I see very positive um, comments or uh, stories about someone, things definitely are not as good as they are portrayed to be. And uh, when very negative things are also being, put, being said, things are definitely not as bad as well. It's somewhere in the middle. It's not, li life is not as black and white. Vinny and I were very clear from the start that we don't know much.
Now, moving on, where there are cash inflows, outflows are indeed bound to happen. That's the word coming in from ACE investor Shubroto Mitra of Axel Partners, speaking exclusively to ET Now's very own Chandra Shrikanta. Shubroto says that entrepreneurs need to see out the downtrend in the market as it is completely normal. Here's a slice of that exclusive conversation. I think mid to long term, you know, India will continue to be growing at a fairly brisk pace. So that's the fundamental. What happened, uh, I think what happens is whenever there is too much of a cash inflow, maybe there is a outflow for a little bit, which is what the public markets are seeing. And, you know, globally we are seeing some corrections and we are seeing maybe the reflection of that a little bit in India. But if you go back to the fundamentals of build, building strong businesses, I think the next five to ten years is going to be you know, good for us in India. Sir, but you know, don't you think it's a little unfair on these companies? I mean, the last couple of years, all the stories were about you know, the amount that they are raising at various valuations. And now suddenly you turn around and tell them, you know, arrest cash burn and bring in unit economics. How is that going to happen overnight? You know, in this world, nothing is unfair. Right? So if, if we were li living through uh, this, these sumptuous... Uh, uh, you know, o over supplies for last six months or 12 months, uh, the entrepreneurs also need to figure out what happens if uh, the land around them dry up a little bit. So it's, it's a good learning. It goes back to the basics. But I, I wouldn't say anything is unfair in this, in this game. If you have to run a startup, you have to be able to, you know, uh, measure up to all of these uh, check posts. In terms of the consolidation that people talk about, we are already seeing it happening in some form. Um, you know, Common Floor uh, getting merged with Quicker, Zoo Rooms getting acquired by OYO. Um, are we going to see more such instances? And you know, is there a stronger case for that now? As uh, um, the large checks dry up a little bit, uh, companies which were getting used to slightly higher burn always find it, it difficult to attune themselves back to the market reality. So some of them may or may not make it, and but that's the reality, right? So 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 the rest of them should learn uh, from other people's and their own mistakes and kind of move on and make it happen for the next six to twelve months while this kind of an environment is out there. How would you really detail the changes that happened at Flipkart recently? So again, I I think at Excel we have been fairly fundamental about how to build a company. You know, like I said, just because there was more money, we shouldn't have changed our business plan last year which means that we shouldn't change it this year as well. You know, obviously, if money completely dries up, there is a problem. But I don't think any such thing is happening. The right companies are still able to raise money. Uh, the right business models are able to raise money. So it, it's a question uh, about sort of attuning yourself or toning back a little bit of the spend, which you are probably trying to do too many experiments. So cut back a little bit on that. Most good companies should be able to go through a downturn without getting seriously hurt. In fact, market leaders actually come out stronger at the other end of a uh, situation like this. Right. Finally, I want to understand, you know, for startups watching the show, where will Axel be investing in over the next few months? Um, if, um, you know, a startup is watching the show, what should they really be pitching to as far as Axel is concerned? Um, we have done a bunch of stuff around local services. Um, we have done uh, a few investments around financial services, actually, technology driven. Um, we have done a few which are mobile only, mobile first kind of consumer plays. And then of course software as a service where we have been doing it for the last 4-5 years. Continue to be bullish on that uh, as well as in healthcare. From one big voice to another, we're talking about uh, OYO's founder, Ritesh Agarwal. Um, he's really spoken to us. Uh, this is his first interview after they bought out Zoo Rooms about the overall consolidation in the hotel aggregation space, um, his plans over the next 12 months, and also how he's uh, really going to put out the correct messaging at a time when OYO has been under fire online for various reasons. Um, there's a, been a lot of controversy around, you know, non payment to suppliers. We put all these questions to Ritesh Agarwal. Let's listen into what he had to say. This year is going to be the year about enabling customer service and experience to go to the next level and very, very focused there. We're going to be making very, very hard calls there in terms of letting some hotels, spending a lot more capital and people behind being able to ensure that we are executing the right technology processes and systems. But the good news is we are already possibly among the more desirable brands in the budget and mid-market segment, but we continue to work towards consolidating our position there. 
With Zorooms out of the way, who is your competition now? You know, how would you divide, define competition? Is it the traditional Make My Trip and IBBO? How would you define your competition? For us, literally everything by means of which a guest can stay in an unpredictable, untrusted hotel is a competition. In a year when everybody is talking about unit economics, capital efficiency, what kind of a pressure is that putting on you at this point, particularly, you know, because you have a big soft bank backing you? Um, is that a comfort factor or, you know, are you now being pushed to become more efficient when it comes to operation? I think the best entrepreneurs will never need to be pushed, they will do it themselves. So our belief is we've always tried to be extremely capital efficient. At some point of times, we've taken very, very aggressive decisions as well, depending on the market. So we believe that that is something that we should do anyway, regardless of what the global environment looks like. Having said that, having the kind of shareholders we have, it is great feeling because we can always request them for any form of capital. But the good news is we are burning very limited capital, which means we don't have that kind of pressure at this point of time. Sometimes expectations do get, you know, out of hand. There's also criticism that's likely to get out of hand. There have been reports in the last few months about, you know, unpaid suppliers. How do you handle all that and ensure that, you know, the right messaging goes out, that uh, you address some of these criticisms? Because I know, you know, a startup cannot have 100% perfect processes. There is a lot of, um, uh, you know, going around uh, the methods to get work done. Yeah. But how do you ensure that, you know, it doesn't cross the line and that you're able to, uh, you know, ensure the right messaging that you're able to convince people that you are personally honest as an entrepreneur so our belief is we are a, we want to continue to be a very transparent organization and it's, it's important to remember that if 5000 hotels in india along with a mil, close to a million room nights are trusting oyo every month it is not happening without any set processes systems ambitions and so on because the kind of money we invest in marketing is actually lesser than what some of our competitors might be doing at this point of time Finally, Ritesh, how do you ensure that all this fan following and selfies doesn't go to your head and you know you still work on your business? I think it's always important to remember that a lot of those things really doesn't matter if you're not building a right business. And second, the kind of team I have around myself keeps me grounded. Around myself, so the guy who heads our operations possibly ran the, one of the larger factories for ITC, you know, was a principal at Boston Consulting Group, the guy who runs our technology used to be uh, head of engineering for SlideShare, so very, very strong leadership team. And when, you, when I look at them, I always feel that I have so much more to prove for myself. I think that helps me keep uh, grounded. And reality is, you know, our company's DNA has been that from day one. Now, Chandra has been having a couple of very busy days at the search conference in Bengaluru. In fact, uh, she was the heart of a panel discussion on this very important question, can mobile wallets go mainstream? That's the question Chandra put to an expert panel on the payment space at the search conference in Bengaluru. Found out, find out why EasyTap CEO Abhijit Bose and Quicksilver's co-founder Pratap believe that the time is right for India to transition to a cashless economy. Take a look. 98% of the white economy is cash, 2% is digital. And that's pretty conservative. There's no large-scale country that will maintain that. So when people say, hey, I'm always going to use cash, it doesn't matter. If we move from 98.2 to 95.5 or 90.10, just 10% digital, we're talking about GDP points increasing in this country. The entire UID project was funded based on streamlining digital payments for LPG subsidies. So that's the macro movement you can have when you actually solve this problem in a small way. If you look at the last 12 months, the rate of growth is phenomenal. So when Janda uh, Yojana was announced, we deployed over 100 million bank accounts within six to nine months. That's on par with the entire US banking system. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, 100 million mobile wallets. So if every company in FinTech is growing at almost 100% quarter on quarter growth. So mainstream is a perspective, right? When we talk about 100, 200 million people getting affected, I think that's the first stage of mainstream. Right. And we don't need to solve 800 million problems in one shot. It'll happen in, in time, right. but it's happening. About three years ago, we had the physical form of the uh, wallets of the brands having 90% contribution in the Indian market across about 150 brands. So these are not anecdotal from a specific right. brand, but across 150 sure. brands, the physical form factor. And last year it was what? 65% was in the digital form. Right. So from a 90, from a 10%, it's grown to a 65%. So those are instances of brands and consumers actually adopting it, but it's still a small share of the overall Indian e-commerce, but at a 3x growth year on year, 
I think I'm going to bet okay. my last pie on it really go, going to be mainstream as we define it. Digital is very good. Cashless economy is very good because, you know, it helps the government keep track of transactions. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the trade-off is the digital trail that you leave. I mean, why should the government know how many, um, what, what I've ordered on Amazon or Flipkart? But you think we need to be a little more realistic here that, you know, a trade-off is inevitable, that, you know, we will end up leaving a digital trail. We are all actually governed globally. So there are international standards. You can't put a random terminal out there. You have to have a certain set of encryption. So the sanctity of a transaction is always going to be com complied against global norms. An Indian transaction is no less secure than an American or European transaction. Uh, everyone needs to understand that. And in fact, to be honest with you, Indian transactions are hyper secure. Countries like US have not adopted PIN, stupidly. <laughs> uh, our fraud rates are actually much less than the US fraud rates, number one. Number two, um, what is a digital trail and what is privacy? If having a record of transactions, that's just the normal course of business. Nobody has ever come to us, nor would we actually be obligated to give the government consumer details. In fact, there's very, very strong guardrails around what we do or don't do. All I can do is see that you did a transaction. I can help you refund it or void it if you want. That's it. The consumer data is yours and they're international norms. By the way, um, as all of you I'm sure know, Apple is in a fight with the US government on this very issue. So right. it's not just something that's happening today. It's a digital, tra a digital trail is not a bad thing. You have to know that transactions are secure. Data has strong norms around what people do or don't do with it. And the government isn't always going to come in. And even if they do want to come in, there are companies that are going to stand up because that's not the way things are done. No startup per conference is complete without a pitch contest and that's exactly what happened here. Who really walked away with the prize and uh, also, you know, what was uh, the mood among the startups, the kind of startups that showcased here? We have Rahul Daima with his ground report. Truly, it's events like these that serve as a mecca as far as startups are concerned. Remember, over 500 startups exhibiting at this surge event. Uh, most of them really, 420 of them, early stage startups in that sense. I have been around here for two days uh, and I see a lot of startups talking about themselves, collaborating. Investors here as well, a few top investors, Axel Partners, Kalari Capital, holding meetings with some of these startups. Uh, the highlight of this event really was the pitch event that saw four 400 startups, then 40 of them streamlined, top three, and today one startup that really made the cut and one that coveted a prize that gives them one lakh dollars of Google credits to use. We have the founder of that startup, so very interesting medtech startups that bringing out innovative products for the elderly and uh, differently abled. Uh, thank you so much, Ganesh. Congratulations on winning, uh, you know, 5,000 people. Sachin Bansil on the stage, Dave from 500 Startups. How does it feel like to have won uh, this competition? It is amazing. I mean, uh, it's like a dream come true. Uh, it's, uh, I am looking forward to the visibility we get after this uh, because we really feel we are solving an important problem and, and we are waiting for the support that comes in to actually be able to realize that dream. I, I want you to take quick 20 seconds and tell us about your product. For viewers watching this, you know, how are you really making life better as far as elderly people are concerned? Yeah, uh, today in India, actually, we are building, a, we have built a shower and commode wheelchair with a unique feature of height adjustability, which makes it really easy for a, a person to shift bedridden persons from, you know, bed to the wheelchair, which is very important from a purview of home care and also hospitals, they don't, even today, you know, 99% of hospitals don't know how to take a geriatric ward patient to a bathroom easily. And for wheelchair users, uh, because of our technology, our first product, they are independently able to access bathrooms, especially the spinal cord injured. So that is how we are making an impact. Interesting, interesting startup there. Congratulations again. Thank you so much. So, you know, while we talk about pessimism in the ecosystem, funding cycles coming down, I can tell you I've been here for two days and the energy that's here is something for you to witness. With that, we come to the end of today's edition of Startup Central as well as the Search Technology Conference in Bangalore. It's been a power-packed two days with extensive coverage uh, on ET Now. But it's over to you, Krishna, to take it forward. That's right, uh, Chandra. That uh, brings to a 
an end. Uh, two days of exhaustive coverage of the first ever search conference in India, in Bengaluru. Chandra and Rahul Dayama in Bengaluru making sure they keep us posted on all the big goings on at Surge in Bengaluru. On that note, uh, we wrap things up here on today's edition of uh, 18 Hour Startup Central. But uh, keep watching 18 Hour, don't go anywhere. Coming up next is uh, Market Watch. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash etnow and don't forget to click the like button. You can also follow us on Twitter at etnowlive. To stay updated with all our programming, hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel by logging on to youtube.com slash user slash etnow.